Wyoming. World renowned for its open spaces and rural ways of life. Our state is also a place where innovation and homegrown solutions are resolving sage grouse issues to ensure a conservation legacy for future generations. There were declines in bird populations, declines in habitat, and the threats to sage grouse continued to mount. When you look at the amount of the landscape in Wyoming that's inhabited by sage grouse, a listing could be hugely detrimental to our state's economy, our way of life, and all of the people that live in this state. Therefore, Wyoming has implemented a win-win solution called the Sage Grouse Core Area Strategy. And we have a strategy that is going to allow for a robust population of sage grouse, certainly help on habitat issues, and at the same time allow us the uh, opportunity to develop our minerals, uh, to have a strong tourism sector and a strong ag sector, with everyone recognizing that the goal was to prevent a listing. What we did is form the Sage Grouse Implementation Team under the auspices of the Governor's Office and brought together the oil and gas industry, agriculture, conservation interests, uh, county commissioners, and all of the different agencies, federal, state, and otherwise, that had a stake in the ultimate outcome of sage grouse. Our strategy directs conservation to core areas containing 86% of the birds within 24% of Wyoming's land base. Development inside cores is limited to one well pad per square mile on average with a 5% cap on total disturbance. Policy steers additional development to less impactful places. At the end of the planning, we ended up with protection of 83% of the sage grouse within the core areas in the state of Wyoming. But it also gave us confidence outside of the core area that we could develop more flexibly. Wyoming's economy is based largely on energy development. We've got to ensure we've got a solid, stable, long-term oil and gas industry in Wyoming. The strategy means everything from the industry perspective. The fact that we were at the table early protecting the jobs that we bring to Wyoming, protecting the habitat uh, that we utilize in our private lives uh, is incredibly important to Encana and the oil and gas industry. The strategy does not address fragmenting effects of residential development. So partners employ conservation easements to further fortify core areas. Governor Meade's core area executive order and the Bureau of Land Management's efforts do address energy development. And they provide that umbrella under which we can bring these conservation easements to fruition and collectively address what is a very complex issue. But certainly every state has specific occurrences and issues that they need to deal with. In Wyoming, I think easements have become very important. I, I think it builds on an unbreakable link between the conditions required for sustainable, productive ranching operations and the habitat characteristics that are required by viable sage grouse populations. Well, what's good for grouse is good for cows. You've heard that. It's good for ranchers too, what's good for grouse. And, and it's good because if we have good, healthy, robust rangelands, we're going to have productive rangelands. That's good for the cows. That's going to, that's going to improve a rancher's bottom line. But those healthy, sustainable rangelands are also going to provide the the ecological network that's so very important to the long-term sustainability of the bird. Under contract with the Sage Grouse Initiative, we at the Nature Conservancy conducted a scientific assessment to quantify the benefits of different conservation actions to sage grouse populations. We basically asked the question, how effective are conservation easements and the governor's core area policy at abating threats to sage grouse populations? In our study, we used sage grouse lek data and we buffered it by eight and a half kilometers. We then projected future residential and energy development and calculated estimated declines with and without conservation in place. A key finding from our study is that without the protections afforded by the core area policy and conservation easements, we can expect declines by 15 to 30 percent in the next 20 years. But with those conservation strategies in place, we can reduce declines by almost two-thirds. What we've seen from this analysis is that simply implementing the executive order and using conservation easements as a tool to protect the habitat for the species, the declines that were projected are radically reduced. One of the key outcomes of our study is a map that can be used to inform conservation decision making by showing us where residential development and sage-grouse populations overlap. 
it highlights where we can maximize our return on conservation investment. We're focusing our resources, the human resource and the financial resource, to really get the biggest bang for our buck. One of the things that I think was really compelling is how much NRCS seized on that and came in and said, we're in, we're all in, and we're going to be a player. Not only through conservation easements, but through the whole Sage Grouse Initiative effort, when they came in and added money for habitat treatments and fence marking, little things and big things, that really kind of brought this up to a different level than what a lot of people thought it would be. It is a complete paradigm shift from other at-risk species conservation efforts, uh, which historically have been top-down and regulatory in nature. I think all of us are tired of sort of fighting this in the court systems and letting individual judges decide our future and our fate when we know the land and we know the species better than they. So what we've done is transferable. It's not only transferable to other states and other landscapes, it's transferable to other species. It is a way of having communities invested in conservation of those things in their backyard, and there is no better way to do this than to allow them to do it themselves.